consider the following system of simultaneous equations. We want to solve these using Gaussian elimination. The first step is to write these equations in augmented matrix form. This means that we set up a matrix with the coefficients of the unknowns on the left hand side, 1, 2, 1 in this case, 2, negative 1, negative 1, and in the last row, 3, 2, 1. We then also want to put in the constants on the right hand side of this matrix or tableau. So in this case, those constants were 6, negative 1, and 8. And it's often a good idea when we're doing Gaussian elimination to write row sums at each step, as these can help check the accuracy of the calculation. So for the first row, 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 6 gives a row sum of 10. For the second row, 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 gives a row sum negative 1. For the third row, 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 8 gives a row sum of 14. And we then need to perform row operations on this tableau so that all elements below the diagonal extending from the top left corner are zero. So in this case, it would be these three elements here in the second and third row of column one and in the third row of column two. So usually the best way to start is to perform row operations on the appropriate elements of the first column that we want to make zero by adding or subtracting multiples of the first row. And this idea is, in other words, using the appropriate row operations. And there are three types of row operations we can do in Gaussian elimination. One is to swap two rows, if at any stage we feel that will make calculations easier. Another one is to multiply a given row through by a non-zero constant. And the third one is what I just mentioned, where we add or subtract a multiple of one row from another. So looking at this element here, first of all, this two in row one, sorry, in row two and column one. Then the corresponding element above it in the first row of the first column is one. So if we're going to get a zero, we're going to want two minus two is zero. In other words, we're going to want row two minus two times the element above it in row one. So writing out our tableau again, the first part of it still looks the same as before. Namely, the first row is still 1, 2, 1, 6. But the second row, we're now going to use the operation R2 minus 2R1. So that in each case, the element in row 2 will have two lots of the element above it in row 1 subtracted from it. So that for the first one, it'll be 2 minus 2 times 1, which will give a 0 as required. The next one will be negative 1 minus 2 times 2. The next one will be negative 1 minus 2 times 1. And the last one will be negative 1 minus 2 times 6. We'll work that out in a minute, but for efficiency, let's look at how we can change the element in the third row and first column to zero using a similar idea. In other words, by adding or subtracting an appropriate multiple of row one. And we're going to want three minus three to get zero. So we need to turn this into a minus three, meaning that for this operation, it's going to be row three minus three row one so that the first entry there will be 3 minus 3 times 1. The next one will be 2 minus 3 times 2. The next one will be 1 minus 3 times 1. And over this side, we're going to get 8 minus 3 times 6. So simplifying that, our new tableau will now be of the form 1, 2, 1, 6. This will become a 0 as required. And here we're going to get negative 5, negative 3, negative 13. And on this row, it's going to simplify to 0, negative 4, negative 2, negative 10. And it's worth keeping the row sums in at each stage. 
And in this case, adding across each row, the first one is still 10 because we haven't changed that row. The next one is negative 21 and the next one is negative 16. And what's useful is that if you look at the row sum, for instance, of negative 21, that's actually the same as we should get if we calculate the row sum of our row 2 at the previous step minus two lots of the row sum corresponding to row 1 at that step. And sure enough, negative 1 minus 2 times 10 also agrees with that negative 21. And that's the idea of row sum checks, which can help you to check the accuracy of your calculation. But now we've still got the situation where this element here we now need to change to be equal to zero. And you might wonder whether we should use add or subtract a multiple of row one from that column two element. But if we do that, then we'll lose this zero that we've carefully worked out. So the elements in column one that we wanted to make zero, we did that by adding or subtracting appropriate multiples of row one. To get an element in column two now equal to zero, it is appropriate to add or subtract multiples of the corresponding element in row two. So that here we're going to want negative four plus four. So we're going to need to multiply the negative five by something to turn it into positive four. And that means this is actually going to become row three minus four fifths times row two. So the first two rows now remain unchanged. But we now said that here we want R3 minus 4 fifths times R2 in this particular case. And when we're working this one out, the first one is just going to be 0 minus 0. The next one is going to be negative four minus four fifths times negative five, which is zero as required. This one, negative two minus four fifths times negative three, that will actually become negative two plus 12 fifths, which simplifies down to two fifths. This one will become negative 10 minus negative four fifths times 13, which actually works out to be negative 10 plus 52 divided by 5, which again gives us 2 fifths. And this is now our final tableau because of the fact that below the principal diagonal, we now have that triangular picture of those zeros there. So what we now do is we rewrite our equations. And the unknowns here were A, B and C in columns one, two and three of that tableau. So if we write out our equations now, the first row of the tableau, A plus two B plus C equals six. In fact, that was not changed. This second row is negative five B minus three C equal to negative 13. And the third row of our final tableau tells us that two fifths times C is equal to two fifths. And we're now ready to solve these equations for A, B and C. So using this first equation here, first up for instance, that one there, two fifths times C equals two fifths, that's just going to imply that C is equal to one. And we can then back substitute C equals one into our previous equation to get negative five B minus three times one equals negative 13. So we solve that for B, so negative five B minus three equals negative 13. Adding three to both sides gives negative five B equal to negative 10. And hence we get the result here that B is equal to two. And we're now going to be substituting B equals two and C equals one into our first equation here, which was in terms of A, B and C. So that is now going to become A plus two times two. And then that was just plus C, so that's going to be plus one, and that was equal to six. Therefore, that's going to become A plus five equal to six. Therefore, 
A is equal to 1 in this case. And so therefore we have found that this system of equations has a unique solution. A equal to 1, B equals 2, C equals 1. So that is the solution of this system equations using Gaussian elimination.